All right, that was Trey Gowdy. He was on with Maria Baratiromo on Fox Business earlier this morning saying, all right, so we're expecting the IG report could be any day, any week now, and he believes it's going to be a thorough and fact-centric investigation. He has counted himself, Gowdy, 24 witnesses the inspector general wouldn't have access to if he conducted uh, the investigation alone, uh, why we need a cent- uh, special counsel, which nobody really wants, because look at what's happening with Robert Mueller. I mean, now Robert Mueller is focused on an advisor to the United Arab Emirates, uh, which now has gone from Russia to, you know, now we're in the United Arab Emirates. Now we'll go back to the Ukraine from 20 years ago. Uh, There's seemingly no end to the depth and lengths of which Robert Mueller won't go here. And then Mueller's subpoenaing, let's see, he wants everybody's emails, attacks, handwritten notes, uh, Carter Page, Corey Lewandowski, Donald Trump, Hope Hicks, Keith Schiller, the former bodyguard of uh, Donald Trump, Michael Cohn, Paul Manafort, Rick Gates, Roger Stone, and Steve Bannon. Well, I got a lot of people like on my list, Bruce and Nellie Orr. I think we ought to subpoena everything that they've got. Struck and Page ought to be subpoenaed. Uh, Susan Rice ought to be subpoenaed. Definitely James Comey. Let's get his emails and let's get all of his text messages. Uh, we have to get them for Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton because they're up to their eyeballs and violating many laws. That would also include Obama. Now we know that Devin Nunes did get answers. We'll have those answers tonight at 9 when we're on Hannity uh, to the deadline that he had Friday night from Obama administration officials. I think we have uh, Samantha Powers has a lot of questions to answer. Uh, ben Rhodes and Andrew McCabe and Loretta Lynch and even Mueller himself, because he was the FBI director during the time the whole Uranium One Russia deal took place, and he knew about these crimes being committed, and he did nothing. Oh, did I mention Jeannie Ray? She too. And George, you know, George Papadopoulos, let's bring him in. Andrew Weissman needs to be brought in. And we could just go on from there. Rebecca, we can bring Rebecca into, you know, let's subpoena all of his emails. As long as we're going through all these emails, Cody Shearer, let's bring his in. Let's bring in Rosenstein and Baker. And let's get their emails and text messages. Anyway, uh, what's good for the goose here ought to be good for the gander, especially if we're actually looking for truth and trying to get to see who committed crimes, what crimes, and when. Uh, But I think a second special counsel is now unavoidable in this particular case. And, you know, as uh, Gowdy said over the weekend, I counted up to two dozen witnesses the inspector general would would not have access to. So we got to have somebody that's going to have access to this. Anyway, joining us now, investigative reporter, Fox News uh, contributor Sarah Carter is with us. Now we're in the Emirates, and now we're subpoenaing everything, but only on one side of of what the investigation ought to be uh, about. Your take. Uh, Yes, uh, Sean, and and when you see how far they've gone beyond their mandate, it kind of makes you question how will another special counsel operate but you're right right now looking at how the inspector general is going to be handling an investigation into this and according to uh you know trey gowdy according to other congressional members that i've spoken with there's just no other way around it uh if we're going to go into an investigation they're going to need access to these witnesses and that's true the inspector general won't have access to all of these witnesses it's going to be very difficult for him I'd add on that list Sally Yates, Cody Shearer, Cindy Blumenthal. I mean, this is a long list of people that need to be talked to, that we need to have access to their records. We need to know what the communications was like just in between Cindy Blumenthal and Christopher Steele. Uh, we need to find out what was going on with this dossier. And right now, according to everyone that I've spoken with, minus uh, the sources that I have at the Department of Justice, they are calling for a special counsel. Now, the Department of Justice will argue differently. They'll say, look, we can do this. The inspector general has the authority to do this. And now that we're expecting the inspector general's report within the next week or so, it'll be interesting to see if anybody is it going to be in the next week or so. Will we get it that soon? Finally, I absolutely. I absolutely believe that we'll see it before the first week of April. Um, now, 
things can change. But that's what I've been told by a number of sources as well. It could be any time. Now, remember, he's been working on this since last year, since January of last year. So Horowitz has had a full year, uh, thousands and thousands, if not millions of documents uh, to go through. And it is true, um, Gowdy brought up a very important point that the inspector general was the one that discovered those text messages between Peter Strzok and Lisa Page uh, that uh, certainly opened up a whole new realm into this investigation. It pointed out Andrew McCabe, and look, Andrew McCabe is gone now. Uh, he is still currently being investigated, and it would not surprise me. Uh, we know we've seen the reports that have come out that said, you know, McCabe uh, has been accused of leaking. Uh, he's also been ac- accused of not being forthright with the inspector general. I believe McCabe has a lot more in his plate than what we've been told. It'll be interesting to see if there'll be any criminal referrals uh, from Horowitz based on that inspector general's report. So if there is, I think that may play into the hands of the Justice Department's arguments that they can handle this kind of case. There's also something that a lot of people aren't looking at. Um, was a letter from Stephen Boyd that was sent out last year, and he's an assistant um, deputy attorney general, where he specifically spoke about prosecutors that were assigned to the case. And now a lot of people have forgotten Remember, beyond the inspector general's investigation, there are also prosecutors that have been assigned to the case by Attorney General Jeff Sessions to look into issues such as the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, Uranium One. Uh, So what have they been discovering? We really don't know because, remember, grand juries and these type of investigations are conducted with such secrecy. Now, not Mueller's (laughs) necessarily. We've seen a lot of leaks. No, we we almost see a leak a day. Let me ask you this. This. It, I, look, this Jane Mayer is hardly a conservative, and she writes in the New Yorker, and it's a long piece out uh, by her. She's a longtime left-wing reporter, which she's arguing that the Steele dossier is mostly credible, and that's why the FBI took it seriously. I mean, but just the opposite has turned out to be true here. Now, if Democrats are going to claim, and we had reports over the weekend that Mueller, you know, is looking to indict Russians in terms of people being guilty of of getting into the DNC emails and hacking into all of this. What gets pretty interesting about that, it turns out that on July 26, 2016, after WikiLeaks disseminated the DNC emails, Steele filed yet another memo, this time claiming that the Kremlin was behind the hacking, which was part of a Russian cyber war against Hillary Clinton's campaign, and many of the details seem far-fetched. And Steele's sources claim that the digital attack involved agents within the Democratic Party structure itself. Now, that might, you know, because it's interesting, the one guy that they don't ever talk to is the one guy that would have the absolute answer. And that is... Yes, you're right. Did, you're right. He's well, the me, one guy. You would think that people would be flying over there just to interview him. Well, I did. And, and let me play what I got out of him. Uh, our source is not the Russian government. So, in other words, let me be clear. Russia did not give you the Podesta documents or anything from the DNA. NC. That's correct. And then he went on to say it's no state at all. Now, he's not been questioned by anybody. My sources have told me that, that WikiLeaks, now, like him or hate him, it doesn't matter. They have an 11-year track record of not being proven wrong. You're absolutely right. And look, our intelligence community interviews terrorists right? Mm -hmm. They'll go to interview a terrorist to gather information. Um, They will talk to people that they don't like in other countries, enemy states. So why doesn't anyone just talk with Julian Assange? Why can't they work out some kind of a deal so they can interview him and find out what he knows? Even more interestingly, Sean, is that the FBI itself relied on CrowdStrike for this information. They didn't go ahead and do this on their own. They didn't investigate this on their own. They relied on an outside source to get that information and i think that's very important well, explain i got to take a break we'll come back investigative reporter and fox news contributor sarah carter and on the other side we'll get to a lot more of your phone calls as well cheryl atkinson coming up on our news roundup information overload hour as we continue with sarah carter investigative reporter and explain who is crowdstrike because all they have are, are democratic fingerprints on them and also what they've been saying has been discredited hasn't it yeah to a large sense it well it would have to be it was it's almost like 
they, they're opted out, right? Because CrowdStrike is a private company, private security company. They can they handle all kinds of issues related to server systems and hacking and things of that nature. But if you just look at the CrowdStrike list, and I wish I could remember all the names off the top of my head, but I've talked to former FBI agents. Look, CrowdStrike hires from the FBI. So a lot of the people that are there in senior level positions are very close friends with Comey, are very close friends with Andrew McCabe, and, you know, and they're getting jobs from them. So let's just put it this way. If, if you're an FBI agent, you getting ready to retire, and you want to move on to a really great company that's going to pay you a lot more than you were probably making in the Bureau, you go to CrowdStrike. Well, you so, have, but well, what do you know about this guy, Henry? He's a former FBI ex. ex- uh, executive assistant. He's the president of CrowdStrike. And by the way, he worked under his time at the FBI was under Comey and Obama. Absolutely. And I, he's very close friends. What I know is he's very close friends with um, Director Comey, former FBI Director Comey, very you know, very close friends, Sean Henry, with, with McCabe. So how can we Honestly, I'm not saying, and we don't have any information to prove that they were wrong, but how can we honestly say that this was an objective investigation when now we've seen the facts? We've seen the facts laid before us. We've seen what Andrew McCabe has done. We've seen what he's been involved in. We're seeing this possibly this scathing report that points him out in an Inspector General Michael Horowitz report, which is supposed to be coming out. And now we're supposed to say, okay, we accept Sean Henry's CrowdStrike uh, report that was handed over to the FBI. Uh, I don't think I've ever heard of this. And I've asked a number of FBI agents who've been involved in counterintelligence investigations and criminal investigations. And they have said over and over again, look, why didn't we conduct our own investigation? That's what we're supposed to do. We're not just supposed to accept what CrowdStrike says. We have to open our own, look at our own data, trace it, figure it out. But there's got to be, but there's got to be direct evidence of where it came from to WikiLeaks. So we, 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 the source is there. There's got to be evidence of where did it come from and how did he load it. And that's the information. Now, there's also, you know, issues involved in terms of the speed and capacity with which information can be transferred. And what I am being told is that the method that they're suggesting in which they could transfer such high volumes of information like the ones that came from the DNC, well, it could be done a lot quicker with a stick than than over, you know, some type of computer system. Is that true? That is true, and that's what I've been told, too. I mean, this is the reason why in any uh, very secure environment, for example, in the government, uh, you will never be able, able to walk into uh, a high-level or classified division of the government with your, you know, with, with, uh, with a stick or with anything that could download uh, documents or equipment quickly because that's what people do, right? That's what spies do. And that's what people who are working within the government would try to do to walk out with information. So, But there are ways to do it. I mean, we've seen people in the past that have done this. So why not just go to the source? Why not go to Julian Assange? Ask him those questions. I mean, he's been pretty much held hostage at the embassy for more than five years now. I mean, is it six years now? And nobody has gone and spoken with him from our government. I mean, that's incredible to me that they have not gone that far to just say, hey, look, we want to interview you. Let us come into the embassy. Let us interview you. Let's figure this out or figure out a way to do this. Where maybe they, he signs some type of documentation. I'm going to give you all the information. They've done it in the past with worse people. You know, if they're considering Julian Assange an enemy of the state, I mean, they've done this before. Okay, so but you know what? Computer forensics out. don't lie. And if Julian can lie. provide them the forensics that prove where the emails came from, then the case is closed. Then we'll know the answer. i got to let you go here. Uh, Sarah Carter, we'll have more with you tonight on Hannity, 9 Eastern on the Fox News Channel, 800-941-SEAN.